Hey everyone, welcome back to Auto Anatomy. I'm Sean, thank you so much for joining us. Today we're back working on the Corvair. Now where we left off last time, we had gotten the car running and had taken it for its first test drive since at least 2008. Now it went well, it drove around the block just fine, but there were a couple of things that were really preventing us from being able to take it on a longer drive. One was that the, the charging system just wasn't working at all. So that kind of limited me to, you know, driving it around the neighborhood, things like that, because I didn't want to, uh, you know, get a mile or two from the house and have the battery die. So we've got a huge alternator upgrade coming on this episode. The second thing that we noticed on the first test drive is that the rear suspension is garbage on this thing. It clunks, it, uh, it feels like it's got a shock that's completely locked up. So I've got to do some rear suspension um, improvements on the thing. Before we get into today's video, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. It's an absolutely free way to, to help support our channel and really helps me out and I would appreciate it very much. So on today's video, we're gonna do a GM one wire alternator upgrade that's going to double the output of the factory alternator for less money and we're gonna put some new shocks and some new bushings on it and hopefully take it for a little bit longer test drive. Let's get started. So the most important thing for me about this Corvair isn't keeping it absolutely 100% original. Moreover, I just really wanna drive the car and have it be reliable and, and safe and dependable. So rather than sticking with the original 37 amp alternator that, you know, it's got the external voltage regulator, I've picked up a remanufactured GM one wire alternator, which is 68 amps, I think. And all you've got to do to upgrade from the original to the one wire here is since the mounting flange on the Corvair is unique, it's got the little two tabs on the bottom here, the back half is identical between the two. So we'll just pop these four bolts out on each one, take the nut and pulley and fan off of the original as well as the front half and just bolt it straight to the back half here. And then we'll have a one wire upgrade that makes 67 amps and is super easy. You don't have to deal with the regulator. All right, if I've done everything right, this should just slide right off. So we're not going to use this part at all. So you can either keep this as a core or just, you know, find a local place to recycle that. We've got to be real careful about pulling the back half off. So we don't want to pull the brushes out of it. So I would say just hold the top here and wiggle this off. Perfect. Now if you look, these are identical on the inside. And we're going to use the new bearing from the new alternator and put it in the old housing. They should be the same size.
put your spacer back on and then the original fan and pulley assembly we're going to use the new nut here since it came off of off the old one or off the new one tighten it up and we've got a one wire for a corvair Okay, next step is you need to get one of these little adapters and you can get this on Amazon or at your local auto parts store, but it's just the plug here. The red wire is gonna go straight to the positive terminal and then the white wire is gonna go to your charge indicator light on the dashboard. Now on this car, I'm gonna have to look that up on the wiring diagram and see which wire that is because I don't know off the top of my head. So now that we've got a functioning alternator and this thing will actually charge, I really want to get, I really want to get onto the rear suspension. Um, you couldn't really tell on the first test drive, but the, the left rear shock I think is completely locked up because it feels like you're driving a log wagon. So I've got some new shocks, I've got some, some miscellaneous bushings. Um, we're not going to do a full suspension rebuild on this because I really just want to be able to get out and drive it and then kind of get a better idea of what all it's going to need before doing like a complete restoration of the entire rear suspension. Before we get to that, if you can click on that little pop-out banner up there, it'll take you right to our merch shop where you can pick up some cool auto anatomy t-shirts just like this one. So I picked up some new shocks from Clark's and got new bolts for the rear because one of them broke. We're going to do more rebuilding of the rear suspension, but all those parts are on order yet. So if you look under here, the, uh, the little strut rod or whatever this is called, the bushing is completely gone. And then, you know, the, the shocks are toast. And then there's some other little bushings way all the way up there that are all just deteriorated from sitting. So the first step is, while the other bushings are en route, let's get these new shocks in place. It looks like just, you know, one bolt down here and then the one nut up at the top in the engine compartment. Before taking this top nut off, make sure you support the, uh, the control arm on the bottom because otherwise there's nothing that's going to keep that control arm from just flopping all the way down. The spring may come out. Um, so just make sure you put a jack underneath it before you take the nut off. Okay, after you know a little bit of time and heat and PB blaster, got the nut off, and then there's a washer that goes on here as well. So these are the bushings, the strut rod bushings that are um, you know just just worn out. So before you start taking this completely off, I like to just support the lower control arm with a jack. I don't know that it's necessarily required, but I like having just that extra layer of security there. Now there's two nuts and bolts, you'll see right here and right here, that have to come off. We'll pop those off and then the whole strut rod will come off. Take the, the inner bushing off, put a new one on, slide it back in, and then it's just bolt it right back together and then the front strut rod bushings will be done. So now that the original strut rod is out, you can see just kind of how bad this bushing is. It's really not as bad as it could have been, but you can see now how much mud is just caked up on top of this car. 
let's get this cleaned off. I got a new set of bushings from Clark's. Now, this is apparently the upgraded version, so you should have a male and a female, and it will just slide on. There is a new little serrated bushing here that goes in place, I guess, to hold them in. And then this one slides on, the new washer and nut, and you are done. Okay, just starting to break loose. This is probably gonna be a process here. Just a minute. All right, after a little bit more heat and coercion, that's off. Let me get a wire brush to these threads, put on the new sleeves and new rubber bushings, and this one will be ready to go back on. So actually it looks like it's gonna be a little easier to assemble these on the car and then slide the strut rod through it. Um, I don't know why I didn't think about that earlier, but got a little uh, light lubricant on here and this should just slide together. Just like that. Now let's try and slide the strut rod through that. That was a whole lot easier actually. And finally, after getting the, the two front strut rod bolts tight, I've jacked up the, the car so the suspension is actually under compression. So it kind of simulates ride height. And now we're going to tighten the big nut here at the back. That came off easier than I thought got to get the rubber off of here. I don't know that I'm going to be able to take this off very well. Oh, there it goes. All right, one bushing down and oh, actually that does come off. What do you know? The old bushing is out. Now, just got to pop the steel sleeve off of there, put the uh, the new bushing in, and then we start the reassembly process. Okay, after fighting with it for just a few minutes, um, lubed it up real good and got the, uh, the new bushing in. So now we just have to push the little steel sleeve in. This will be one completed assembly. We'll do another one for the other side and then put the, uh, the sway bar bushings on the bar. Put the uh, bar in the car. All right, so I've got the rear suspension all back together and just been trying to drive it around a little bit. I've really noticed that rear wheel bearing, at least one of them, is making a ton of racket. And I think that's honestly going to be the next thing that I've got to work on. Um, the car is running and driving beautifully, though. The new rear shocks have made a world of difference because the left rear was completely solid. It was locked up and it wasn't compressing at all. Listen, if you like these kind of videos, I really would appreciate if you hit that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. It's an absolutely free way that you can help support our channel. Thank you so much for watching. Next time we're definitely going to have to do something about these wheel bearings. And then, I really just want to start driving this car. Thanks for watching. God bless. We'll see you next time.